Hey, welcome to our scene on the sulfonamides, represented by this guy over here who is a salesman and he sells these fun men with might. These are fun men with might. Sell fun men with might for sulfonamides. This guy, I guess, is apparently interested in the, in the fun men with might. Well, anyway, in this video, we're going to talk about the sulfonamides and we're going to talk about the different types. We're going to talk about sulfonidoxazole, sulfazoxazole, and sulfadiazine. This is easy to remember. They all start with sulfa. Okay, let's start with mechanism of action of the sulfonamides. So here we have this salesman who's really excited because he probably has his first customer all year. And he's standing on top of his pet rodent. The pet rodent with the dyed hydrants on its back. The dyed hydrant rodents for dihydroteroate synthase. Sulfonamides work by inhibiting dihydroteroate synthase. And by doing so, they inhibit folate synthesis. By inhibiting folate synthesis, they are bacteriostatic. More specifically, they act as PABA analogs, PABA analogs. And for that, we have this polar bear in this store here. So this polar bear is gonna remind us of PABA. The salesman is acting like PABA. The salesman is acting like him because he's an analog of PABA. That's how sulfonamides work. They act as analogs of PABA. And we're gonna make this a little bit clearer in the picture. So let's depict what normally happens. Here we have the polar bear who's gonna represent PABA. As we mentioned, normally the enzyme dihydroteroate synthase comes and converts PABA as well as tyridine. And that was represented by this rodent here with the two hydrants. They converted it to dihydroteroic acid. And for that we can imagine this dihydrant rodent with acid or the lemon. So, so far we have PABA and tyridine is converted by the enzyme dihydroteroate synthase into the molecule dihydroteroic acid. The main character over here, or the sulfonamide guy, inhibits this step. Now, dihydrotheroic acid is then converted to dihydrofolic acid. And for that, we can imagine this foliage over here with the two hydrants in it. So again, dihydrotheroic acid is then converted to dihydrofolic acid. Dihydrofolic acid is then converted to tetrahydrofolic acid. And for that, we can imagine these tetris pieces over here in this pile of foliage. So again, PABA is first converted to dihydrotheroic acid through the enzyme dihydrotheroate synthase. Dihydrotheroic acid is then converted to dihydrofolic acid, which is then converted to tetrahydrofolic acid. And this is through the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. That makes sense. Dihydrofolate reductase is reducing dihydrofolic acid. Tetrahydrofolic acid then goes on to form purines, thymidine, and methionine, which are important for DNA, RNA, and protein synthesis. Now we can see how sulfonamides inhibit folate synthesis because they block this step. They block dihydroteroate synthase. I'm just going to mention that trimethoprim is another antibiotic that's used to block folate synthesis. But it blocks a different step. It blocks dihydrofolate reductase. So if you want, we can imagine a tricycle for trimethoprim jumping over here and exploding the dihydrofolate reductase. Okay, so let's go back to our scene. Okay now, so we mentioned that sulfonamides are bacteriostatic. We're going to mention a side point that they are actually bactericidal when they're combined with trimethoprim. Okay, now let's talk about the clinical use of the sulfonamides. And for that, we're going to take a look at these mighty men in the back. Here we have the fun mighty men. And we note that some of them are red and some of them are purple. This reminds us of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Sulfonamides are effective against a wide range of bacteria, both gram-positive and gram-negative. Oh, wait a second. Let's listen to what one of them are saying. No cards. He's saying no cards. I don't know why. It's kind of random. But it's going to remind us of nocardia. Sulfonamides, especially when combined with trimethoprim, are effective against nocardia specifically. Wait a second. These guys have urinary tract infections. That's interesting. This is also going to remind us that trimethoprim sulfonidoxazole is effective against simple urinary tract infections. Also, they have these interesting burns. They're on fire. This reminds us that certain sulfonamides are effective at treating infections caused by burn wounds. Okay, now that we talked about mechanisms of action and clinical use, let's talk about adverse effects. And for that, we're going to take a look at this random guy here that's standing on the side of the store. This random guy over here is going to remind us of the adverse effects of the sulfonamides. The first thing we note is that his nephron over here is dead. And that's because his nephron over here got sick and died. And that's going to remind us of the nephrotoxicity, which is an adverse effect of the sulfonamides, which is specifically associated with the tubulo-interstitial nephritis. 
And actually, this guy is very sensitive. He got very hypersensitive, we'll say, and he started to cry. <laughs> My nephron died. He's very sad about it. He's hypersensitive. Hypersensitivity reaction is another adverse effect of the sulfonamides. He's also very sensitive about the light that's shining in his eye. Photosensitivity is another adverse effect of the sulfonamides. You might have noticed that his name is Johnson, and this is going to remind us of the Stevenson-Johnson syndrome that's associated with the sulfonamides. And his son over here got corn in his brain, which is going to remind us of the carnicterus, which is seen in infants. His son is actually sad because this red blood cell exploded. And that's going to remind us of the hemolysis if the patient is G6PD deficient. We also note the rash on Mr. Johnson's chest over here. A rash can develop. And finally, we note this fin going up. Maybe it's the war fin because it has this dynamite on it. The war fin. This is going to remind us of warfarin. Trimethoprim sulfamidoxazole is known to increase blood concentrations of warfarin. And this is through displacement of warfarin from albumin in the plasma. This can cause unexpected increases in clotting time and uncontrolled bleeding for individuals on anticoagulation with warfarin therapy. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on the sulfonamides. Please subscribe to the channel and take care.